All the way from Oklahoma, huh? Hey, what's up, Richard? Hey, not a lot, just another day at the office, let me tell you guys. Hey, this is uh, Richard back at you. Today we got Mario's 77 El Camino in the house, all the way from Oklahoma. It's got a 350 in it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's original or anything like that, being a 77, could be. Uh, it's done a lot of modifications to the motor and stuff like that, really nice car. Now, uh, we're gonna actually do, uh, or explain a little bit how to make this tranny fully manual because I didn't finish my uh, last video out uh, showing everybody how it was uh, to do that. So, we're gonna do that in this video here to finish out the, the, the last one, so. Basically, what we got here, we have what I call is a B35 torque converter. Uh, it's normally a bolt and a nut uh, bolted to the flywheel. Uh, but you can see here, somebody come in here and, and tack welded uh, the nuts to the torque converter. Now, if you, let me grab the one we're going to be putting in here. Now, we might be going back with a factory stall, or we might be going back with a high stall, uh, 2500, so I'm not really for sure. But I wanted to show you, you can see here, it would take a nut and a bolt style to mount it to the flywheel. Or somebody here TIG welded that on there, so. Uh -uh. The fluid looks really good though. Looks cherry red. You're starting to see quite a bit of wear on the hub. Just like that. You can see down in here, you see a lot of wear, especially where the gears run. Fluid is cherry red though. Yeah, it looks like he was taking care of it. So we'll get this rear seal out of here first. My universal screwdriver. Get the rear seal out. And now we are going to grab a 916th deep socket. And get the tail housing off. Okay, Tracy, you can come over here. Don't be shy. Standing pretty far away. Think it's just in there. Now I don't know the reason uh, for a stud on one side. Uh, there was nothing hooked to them. See your speedometer gear. You can see how bad that wobbles. We know the housing's probably going to be totally wore out. Uh, let me get a 10 millimeter. Uh oh. Lost my 10 millimeter almost. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Now, normally these housings are always uh, oblonged on the inside where the gear just wobbles really bad usually jumps over the, this gear here because there's just so much space here. You got a new seal and uh, ring in here that holds it together. See a little metal clip. You can actually get two seals down in there and put the clip back in if you want double sealing on these, but what we'll do is we'll get rid of this and get a steel solid bullet and put in here. Uh, it comes with a hard uh, seal instead of a soft seal like this one here. A really good upgrade. Of course, a new bushing in here. It's our tail housing seal. Now we're gonna take this speedometer gear off. Now there's a little clip right here, you just push down on it. First I'm gonna kinda pull it towards it. Well, come off easier than you thought, I thought. Mm -hmm. Normally you gotta pop them a little harder, push this down, uh, get it to unlock from here, and then tap it off, so. These crack real easy, guys, putting them on and taking them off, so you gotta be really careful. And we're gonna take our modulator off. And we always go back with an adjustable modulator, that way we can control, have a little bit of control over this tranny on the shift fields and stuff like that. There's actually a screw down in here you can turn uh, that can will take a and raise the shift pattern farther away or earlier. The farther you screw it in, uh, the later and the firmer the shifts, uh, the farther you screw it out, the earlier and the softer. So normally the standard setting, we usually turn it in one turn right off the bat and go drive and see how it feels. Uh, if it needs to be adjusted, then we adjust it that way, so. 
Now we have our governor here. Okay, now, now the way we make this thing fully manual, you could do it at home without spending a dime, just some filtering fluid. Uh, if you don't tear your valve body gaskets and stuff like that, you don't physically need anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to weld these two weights right here where they stay out. We're going to take and TIG weld it there. We're going to come over here and TIG weld this one here. That way this does not move. And then we're going to come in here, this paddle here, see how that's spring loaded? We're going to take and put a TIG weld here, one here, that way it makes it solid. Same way with this side here. We're going to come and TIG weld it there and there. That way these weights don't move and these middle weights don't move. This is all stuck outward just like that. You can grind the gear off here uh, where, the gear, where the governor doesn't turn anymore, but you have to leave the governor on there to keep the distance right for the fluid to work properly. So you can make it, leave it spinning with a new gear or you can grind it off either way. But that's the first step on uh, making it fully manual, okay? Now, if you want to make it fully manual, but put it in drive and it shifts automatically, then you don't do anything to the governor. I'm going to show you the step in the valve body you do. That makes that even simple to do, too. So, uh, so once you put it together that way, then if you want to make it fully manual, all you got to do is pull the governor off, weld it, or have one in the trunk of your car, in the club box, pop it up, boom, we're going to the races. Same type thing. Now we're going to come over and get this uh, servo cover snap ring out and cover. Now there's not going to be a spring in here, but there usually is a spring in here. Just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the original spring back in here behind this accumulator. And then we're going to make it shift a little bit firmer uh, in other ways than doing it here. Uh, when you leave this out, it, to me, uh, for a daily driver and uh, to keep customer complaints down, uh, you need to leave this spring in there. So then if you don't think it shifts firm enough, uh, you take the spring out. Real simple. So we put it in there right off the bat. Uh, that way, uh, if we don't have to mess with it, we don't have to. And it's an easy fix if we do. So we're going to get our modulator valve out here. And make sure they're cleaned up right here. Got the hole clean here and here. Blow air through it. Make sure it works good. Pretty simple. Pretty good smell to it, doesn't it, Teresa? Yeah. Definitely tell it's got that burnt smell to it. Now, we don't like using cloth filters unless it's just a must. Especially on a 350, I'd rather put a screen filter in it. Uh, it just works a lot better to me. So. Now, we have our passing gear linkage here. Uh, you can see a piece of the linkage is still broke off in there, the cap part of the cable. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, when you put the vehicle on the floor, uh, it comes here, you push the gas pedal down, it pushes this. And when it goes into this second spring, this is real floppy here, but it stops. And then all of a sudden, it's got another spring that's harder. So it's two stage, bang, 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 passing gear, passing gear, passing gear. OK, but when we do, if we're going to make this a performance unit, uh, we'll do away with the passenger cable, and we'll come in here and take this bar right, this uh, bracket here, wrap it around this bolt. But when I do, I cut it to the length to where it's got that held down right there. But I do not go into the valve. If you go into that valve any at all, you're in, you're in passing gear. So, but you bend it, get it to where it's just touching, and then try to pry it back just a, a couple thousandths. Do not go into the second stage. Okay, pretty simple. I'm telling you, you do it like I say, it'll work really good and you get done. Get this off here. 
You can see here two stages on this valve. Real floppy, and it gets hard, and now it's got a hard spring right there. Right through there, that little area right there. So, pretty simple. And then we have all of our parking stuff here and detent levers. You want to make sure this is uh, bent far enough this way where this can't fall out. Always check this nut down here and tighten it because these are really bad about coming loose, causing all kinds of shifter issues and stuff like that, and this little S-shaped clip falling out. So you want to always check that. All the valve body bolts are the same length. Now these are two, your uh, alignment bolts here. And your manual valve. Like I say, you can uh, bend this a little bit to adjust your depth to on your valve. Um, but let's say mainly bend this and make sure it's in really good. And then you have your pressure regulator valve here, your shift valves, your detent valve, and right here, guys, this is a valve that we're going to make this tranny fully manual. What we're going to do, this is a spring and a valve right here that moves. What we're going to do, what I do, makes it real easy for us. We'll come in here and uh, TIG weld this valve right here where it doesn't move. We TIG weld it forward. Don't mess with it. Clean it. TIG weld it. Now this tranny has uh, the fully manual capability. Once you do this, this transmission, when you put it in low gear at 100 miles an hour, it's going to go into low gear. It's going to go into second gear no matter what you do if you weld this valve solid. So to make this tranny fully manual, Weld this valve solid. Do the welding on the governor that we're talking about. That right there will be a fully manual transmission. Now, if you want it just to be manual but have the automatic capability, weld this valve here only. This one right here, Teresa. Can you see that good? This one here. Pretty simple. You can leave your spring out right here. We don't like to leave it out totally. Uh, because this uh, snap ring always breaks. You notice it was real floppy on there. It's fixing to fall off anyway. What we like to do is uh, put a weaker spring in there out of a 4L60. Uh, the blue springs that we throw away uh, in the 3-4 accumulator, uh, this spring right here, the blue one, uh, we'll put that in there. And now this thing is just floppy enough to put that snap ring back in there but not enough to affect it uh, to where it makes the tranny shift any different. Uh, it'd be just like leaving it out. It's so flimsy. But when, every time it relaxes, it keeps that like, snap ring in, in its place right there. Pretty simple. So always do that too, guys. Now, okay, like, like I said, somebody's been into this unit too and done some modifications that I do normally. So uh, to make this a racing unit too, these two holes right here, you want to drill out. He's got a, they've got a massive, look how big they drilled them here. I'd say 150,000, 140,000 is plenty right here. These are, that's really overkill, but it won't hurt, okay? Now, there's going to be a couple of check bolts we're going to be leaving out. Now the gaskets are different from top to bottom, from case to valve body. You'll see this little Z looking line here. So it, it, there is differences. Now also, your check ball is what we're gonna be leaving out. We're gonna be leaving this check ball here out and this check ball right here out. This check ball here, leave in. This check ball here, leave in. They left this one out. I like to leave both these in. But leave this one here out, this one here out. Drill your two holes here. And here, weld your valve body. Weld this valve here where it doesn't move. Do your governor. You have a fully manual 350. That will work really nice. Okay? 
Other than that, that's all you have to do to, to make a fully manual 350. Pretty simple, guys. Okay, let me get uh, the mount off of it real quick. Excuse me. Of course, you can see the studs already broke off the mount here. We're going to have to get a new mount put on it. Get our parking stuff off here. Uh, so I like to take and hold this lever. You can kind of turn it and let it lock in the park. Get it to lock in the park like that. Then it makes it easier to put this piece on when you do that. So, pretty simple. On your uh, servo here, uh, just leave it alone, put a new seal on it. Uh, make sure it's assembled properly. You got your little washer right here. That little washer. Make sure that's on there. Take it all back together. No modifications. Okay. Make sure on this lever right here, don't forget to tighten the heck out of that right there. It's a big problem about coming loose. There's that piece of that cable that was broke off in there. Still got the seal on it. Mm -hmm. So. You can see uh, just by pulling these bolts out right here, the fluid just pour out of these holes right here. So that's why we always double seal these bolt holes down through here through the bottom. Because uh, don't always depend on that new rubber seal to seal it there, guys. One of them's going to get you. And then you're going to say, Richard told you so. Now we like to go into the, these and find a good pump. Uh, the pump's what costs us a lot of money on these now to get them rebuilt or just finding one. That's a thrust washer style pump. Got a selective shim here to set your clearances and stuff. Okay. Now also since we're going to be building just say a race car unit, make it fully manual and all that type of stuff, we're going to go in here and we're going to leave this center ring off right here. That's already missing. So somebody had a little bit of knowledge of something going on when they built this unit. Why does it burn up? Well, I don't know. We're going to find out where it's burned up. Why it's burned up. Hopefully. Going to come in here and look at the pump stator. Look right through here. Looks really nice. pump gears. All that metal on there. Look at that grinding on there. I don't know what that is. It, something's come. See that all of it there? Yeah. Are those good? No, they're no good. Now we can put new gears in here if the body's good, but most of the time the body's bad too. If you can't get this gear out, normally like this, it's got a lip uh, already built up on it where you can't get it out. Ground it up. And it'll have a lip right here. There's a big old lip. You can see it right here where this gear's tried to be pushed that direction. You can see that lip yep. right there. You can see it. Yeah. So you can see here where the pump body looks brand new all the way over here through here. But when you get over here, it just warp pump out. So good pump stator, bad pump body. We get over here and we can kind of hook under this engine braking band like that, lift it up, and pull everything out. Really simple. Now, this is uh, what we call overkill on a 350. Uh, anytime you build a 350, you never want to take the intermediate wave out. Even when I build one for a trans brake use or anything like that, 
Even if I put a, a 34 element sprag in here, I always leave the wave in, in intermediate. This clutch is so big that it don't take much for it to shift hard. And I'm telling you, you can make this tranny shift harder than you want it to shift. So always put the wave back in here. Never double stack of steel. Uh, because once you leave the wave out, you leave your accumulator spring out, you leave your check balls out, you drill your feed holes in your plate. Let me tell you, you ain't gonna want second gear to even come on if you leave this wave out. So always put that in there. Uh, that way it doesn't beat your 34 element sprag. This here doesn't have a 34 element sprag. It's just got a standard sprag in it right now. And you can hear it squeaking. All your factory sprags uh, that's under a spring will usually have to make that type of sound. Now, I'm shocked that this ain't blowed in a million pieces already. I don't know how long this unit's lasted or, or what. But you can see here, just a standard roller clutch in it. You don't see that come off too often. Got that pretty loosened up. Oh. And you got your race here. Now they do make a hardened race here too. Check for any chatter marks or anything like that. Looks good, Scott's brought it up. I'm gonna look in here for your ceiling rings run. Third reverse circuit through here. Scott's brought that up, it looks good. Uh, 80 grit your drum here for your engine brake band. But you can see it's all tired, just all the pitting and stuff on it. And then we're gonna get in here to our third gear clutch. It's probably just a four pack. It could be a five if uh, he got lucky. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Got lucky there. That's a good, somebody did him a good job. Now, we would have put green clutches in here. We wouldn't have used a stock clutch in, on this type of unit, though. That'd be a no-no. So we're gonna get in here and find out uh, what our forward clutch looks like. We still haven't found the smell yet, have we, Teresa? Now here we have our forward clutch. This could be a little bit of the smell. Could have been ran low on fluid possibly. Pump getting weak, stuff like that. You got your Teflon bushing here. Also sets down inside an output shaft. You always wanna look for wear here. You wanna look for wear here. You wanna look for wear here. The last video I showed was wore out just like this shaft is. Or the last video I showed you, the shaft is wore out too, just like this one. This one here is, um, the other one was actually wore out worse on the one side. It was almost not even, you couldn't tell on one side, but bad on the other. But same way down in here. So if these shafts are wore out, bad bushings or anything like that, you can actually have converter drain back on this unit through the bushings in the stator. So, through these bushings through here and stuff. So weak pump gears causes converter drain back. Bushings in your stator causes drain, converter drain back. All that type stuff, so. Of course, we have a thrust washer here that's uh, started getting shoved out for some reason. You can see here, it's totally wiped out. That's down in here like that. Now, I haven't seen any reason for this to be pushed on really hard yet. You know, we didn't set the clearances up or anything like that, so it could have been set up too tight, multiple things. We have a thrust washer here. Check here for any, you know, ruts or anything like that. You'll have a new bushing here that goes in your kit, comes in your bushing kit. Now, anytime you put this uh, wide bushing in right here, this bearing has a step on it. So you want to make sure that you put your bushing down in there far enough to, to miss that step on that bearing. See that? They barely knocked it down in far enough. If you stick it 
flush and you put that bearing in there, it's going to bust this bearing and it's going to make all kinds of metal. So you got to be careful on putting that together. If I can get my snapper out of here real quick without causing any grief, seems like I always have problems. Put my glasses on too. There you go. Sometimes I get lucky. And you have your forward planet. Say, so look here really close where this bushing runs. This bushing right here runs on there. Look for any type of purpling of the pins, any thrust washer wear, any rocking of the gear, anything like that. Check your splines. Then you have another four tab washer down in here. You can see it's pretty wore out too. It's hard melting it through here. This tranny's probably been really, really hot. I uh, run a little bit low on fluid. Uh, it's a big car, so it's really hard to tell. So check your bushings here, place them in your kit. Look at your sun gear you get on both sides. Same way on your ring gear here. You want to look on both sides of your ring gear. Look for any type of wear. Okay. Well, this is going to be another train wreck. Well, if you look down in here, this case is pretty much totally gone. If you look here, you can see the support is almost totally stripped right here out. See that all the way around? Yeah. So this thing here is going to be really tough to get out. There's only one solution that I found to get these out, and that's to take them out back and abuse it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do. We bought 20 or 30 cores here last week. Uh, just to start tearing down and start getting cases and parts and stuff so getting so hard to find and stuff like that. So, so basically get our check balls out of here. Going to set that and let that drain for just a second. Kind of move this away a little bit. Huh? They don't want to see this, do they? Oh, they love carnage, Teresa. Oh. Well, this is the only way I found out to get this out. Uh, we don't see much damage when we get it out. Usually the case is already wiped out anyway. If it, what it breaks, it breaks. Uh, we got cores and stuff, but uh, to take care of all this stuff. So let's go out here and get some carnage going, do some damage. Follow me, Teresa. Now normally I can just sit here on this concrete right here and just give it a whack. But you can see down in here, Teresa, how far that's turned. Yeah. See that right there? Mm -hmm. so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set that just like that. And I'm gonna go grab this steel plate. And I'm gonna put this plate right here like this. And I'm fixing to jab this thing through the ground. And see right there, it hasn't moved a bit. And it, it probably, it was, as hard as I was hitting it, it probably ain't going to move. So I'm basically going to give up on it right now because as hard as I hit it, I'm going to end up hurting myself or my hands or, or something like that. It's not worth doing it. So that's what we go through. Guys, when it um, when it's like that, so it's just physically, it'd be tough to try to get in here and even turn it because it's just 
spun through all of them and it's so far underneath the uh, the lip there that uh, it's just going to have to knock every one of these out to get that support out of there. And I can't hit it hard enough without hurting myself. So, guys, got me worked up there. Thanks, Teresa, for uh, recording. Definitely, that tells you how to build a fully manual, non-fully manual 350. Uh, put good clutches in and stuff like that, guys. And I'm telling you, this thing will work flawless. It, it'll, it'll be a really nice unit for you. And believe me, uh, don't believe what everybody says out there. Y'all have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Push that like button. Thank you again, Teresa. Have a great day.